In our universe, when you change from a non-moving perspective to a moving one, or vice versa, that change of perspective is represented by what's called a Lorentz transformation, which is a kind of squeeze-stretch rotation of space-time that I've mechanically implemented with this space-time globe. Two of the most famous implications of Lorentz transformations are phenomena called length contraction and time dilation. And while their names make them sound like they're two sides of the same coin, they're definitely not. We'll start with time dilation, which is easier to see. Suppose I have a clock with me that ticks every two seconds, but if you're moving at a third the speed of light to my left, then from your perspective, the time coordinates at which my clock now ticks are slightly farther apart. According to you, it takes about 2.12 seconds between each tick, instead of two seconds. Time literally is running slower for me relative to you, because Lorentz transformations, which represent how relative motion works in our universe, kind of stretch things out a bit. Likewise, if you have a clock with you that ticks every 2.83 seconds, then from my perspective, it will tick every three seconds. So both of us perceive each other's perception of time as running slow by the same factor. That is, relative motion causes our perception of the duration of time between events to become longer, or dilated. Time dilation. If you're wondering how it can make sense that we both perceive each other's time as running slow, well, I have another whole video on that, but in short, it's because our respective world lines, which correspond to our own time axes, are rotated relative to each other, and so we each only attribute a projection of the other person's world line's length as representing movement through time, and the rest as movement through space. The factor by which intervals are dilated depends on how fast we're moving relative to each other, and the expression looks like this. But it's really just saying, how much higher up in time is this point after a Lorentz transformation? And if you plot the expression, you'll see that for slow speeds, relative time intervals are roughly equivalent, but the closer you are to light speed, the more our relative perception of times becomes distorted. Length contraction, on the other hand, is a tad more complicated. First, we need something with length. Let's suppose we have a cat whose tail is at position zero for all time, and whose head is 600 million meters to the right for all time. Remember, each horizontal tick mark here represents 299,792,458 meters. So from my perspective, the cat is 600 million meters long. However, from your perspective moving at a third the speed of light to the left, the ends of the cat get stretched out from each other by the Lorentz transformation which at first might seem like dilation of distance, not contraction. And this is indeed true. From your perspective, the distance between the cat's tail at my time t equals 6 and the cat's head at my time t equals 6 is indeed longer. It's now 636 million meters, dilated by the exact same factor as in time dilation. However, this dilated distance doesn't represent the length of the cat from your perspective, because these measurements of the positions of its head and tail no longer happen at the same time, and the cat moves in between when the measurements are taken. That's what it means to have a slanted world line. You're changing your position as time passes, aka moving. And if something moves while you're measuring it, that measurement doesn't represent its length. So to correctly measure the length of the cat from your perspective, we need to measure the positions of its front and back at the same time according to your perspective, which is this distance here, which is clearly shorter, 566 million meters. In fact, it turns out it's exactly the inverse factor from the other distance. Instead of multiplying 600 million by 1.06, it's divided by 1.06. The same thing happens the other way, too. If you have a cat that's stationary in your perspective, then when I view it from my perspective, I'll measure its length, by measuring the head and tail at the same time, according to me, as being shorter. This is the phenomenon we call length contraction. The measured lengths of moving things are shorter than when those things are viewed as not moving. The precise factor by which lengths are contracted again depends on how fast we're moving relative to each other, and looks like this. And similar to the case of time dilation, the closer you are to light speed, the more relative perception of lengths becomes distorted. So let's recap. Time dilation of moving objects is simply the direct effect of Lorentz transformations stretching consecutive time coordinates apart in time, while length contraction of moving objects is a combination of the stretching effect of Lorentz transformations on spatial distances, which is kind of like a distance dilation, plus then changing the times at which we're comparing things because they were no longer simultaneous. This is what I meant when I said earlier that time dilation and length contraction aren't two sides of the same coin. Time dilation compares the times of the same events in the new perspective, and it pairs with distance dilation, which compares the positions of the same events in the new perspective. Length contraction, in contrast, compares positions at the same time according to the new perspective. So you might be wondering, is there a time version of length contraction then? Is time contraction a thing? Yes, yes it is, although most people never talk about it and it doesn't have an official name. But I think it's nice to complete the full picture. The one missing piece is to compare times at the same position according to the new perspective. 
Let's imagine I've put a light bulb at every point in space, even in between here where I can't attach them to the time globe, and I turn them all on simultaneously at one time, and then turn them off simultaneously a little bit later. From your moving perspective, any particular one of my lights will have its on-off time interval dilated, of course, but at any particular location in space, like where you are, the duration of time between when the lights go on and when the lights go off will actually be shorter. Maybe it should be called duration contraction. So to summarize, when changing to a moving perspective in our universe, there's both time dilation and time or duration contraction, and length contraction and distance dilation. These four ideas said aloud as words certainly sound super contradictory and impossible. I mean, how can time be both shorter and longer? But if you have a space-time globe, it's easy to understand that there are no paradoxes or contradictions. We simply need to be more careful with our ideas of distance and time intervals when applied to extended objects in space-time. Do we mean the time between two exact events, or the time that passes between the versions of those events that happen at the same place? Do we mean the distance between two events regardless of when they happen, or the distance between the versions of those events that happen at the same time, which is the length? This is subtle stuff, and words and equations by themselves make these concepts really, really hard to keep straight. But a space-time diagram? Now, that doesn't lie. To get more experience with time dilation and length contraction yourself, I highly recommend Brilliant.org's course on special relativity. There you can do problems that build off what you learned in this video and explore real-world scenarios where it's important to take time dilation and length contraction into account, like the famous Michelson-Morley experiment. The special relativity questions on Brilliant.org are specifically designed to help you go deeper on the topics I'm including in this series, and you can get 20% off a Brilliant subscription by going to Brilliant.org slash MinutePhysics. Again, that's Brilliant org slash minute physics, which gets you 20% off premium access to all of Brilliant's courses and puzzles, and lets Brilliant know you came from here.